You heard it. We're green. Spin up into the turn one and hard into the wall. So we don't even make it through the first lap. And, and it is hands off the steering wheel, which is always a very good thing to do. James Hinchcliffe, starting on the front row, loses it going into turn number one. Lean, mean, and green for quite a few laps. Back under our fourth caution at the Iowa Speedway, and Eric Almarola has just racked up his second car of the weekend. The uh, first one wasn't his fault. He got swept up in some oil. And uh, this one, we haven't seen the replay yet, but it happened up between turns three and four, and there's a lot of damage in the front. Well, one of the things, when you see that right front all caved in like that, Rusty, this safer barrier has made that hit for a driver. Not that All of a sudden, the back end, oh, comes yeah. around with him. Man, yeah. and, and what a great save. It was a great save, but Darrell, he lost oh, two seconds. McMurray in the wall. Oh, no. McMurray, whose best career finish two weeks ago at Nazareth fourth. Now he's a flame. Caution is out. And that car is spent. Get out of there. Get out of there. He had a right front tire go down. I looked at, I'm looking right at it. Quickly, they get okay, guys. He's Jamie okay. out of the car. And we're under the fourth caution at lap 173. What a shame. Had a great race car all day long. And it would have been his best career finish. Yeah, and we felt like, you know, he might have been backing up a little bit. Uh, Green got by him there. Maybe he felt something happening and uh, didn't catch it soon enough. Disappointed, I know. Let's see what happened to third place Jamie McMurray. See him go in the corner here. He's it's right of your right screen. here. Thing just takes off with him as if the tire's down. That tire goes down. It don't matter how far you crank that steering wheel. It's going to go straight. The only thing that's going to stop you is that wall. Now, what's on fire here? That's a, it looks like a, maybe a brake fluid, oil. Could be the fuel pump on the Chevrolet's on the right side there. Could be a number of things. I would say that's a good chance that's a fuel pump, Darrell. It's yeah. right there against the way the snout's designed, the front clip. So now the question, Larry, is when the pits are opened, who will come in, who will stay out? Well, that's the great thing about the pits being closed right now. It gives you a little bit to Back at Lowe's Motor Speedway under caution for the second time tonight. One of the uh, top rookie contenders, David Reagan, having trouble with his Ford. Roush Fenway car number six on lap 21. We'll show you what happened to David here just a moment ago. Pretty tight racing right here. Oh. Didn't know that 41 was out there, I bet. No, I just didn't see it coming. If I was a spotter, I'd have been hollering right now. He's an outside, he's an outside, but he might have been doing that. This stuff happens awful quick. You close the rate of closure. As you're coming to that start finish line, that's your fastest part of the racetrack, right? This is uh, the track is just treacherous right now, Larry. It's slick. Uh, I, this is one of my big concerns. If I was a driver down there tonight, I'd be yeah, saying 10 laps. I think a very cold tire with a very slick racetrack. Darrell, you said in these first laps, turn three would be. Hold the your line. Point. That's what I was doing. Let's see what happens. No the UPS Ford. Oh, that looks like may have gotten some contact there from Robbie Gordon. Robbie Austin Gordon. Seven. Uh, you heard Dale say he dove, or his spotter say he dove under you. Dick Bergman. When the formal portion of today's drivers meeting ended, Mark Martin stood and addressed his fellow drivers and reminded them that this tire doesn't really get going for five or six laps and to take it very, very easy for those first few laps. He also asked the crew chiefs to issue that same reminder. NASCAR's David Hoots echoed that same comment and uh, we got to be careful tonight on new tires. Most of them revolving around whether or not 2005 will be Rusty's last year of competition at this level. Wait and see. Tony Abbey in the 80 car. 
Yep, second XL Cup Series race for Tony. Made his debut at Watkins Glen. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That was ugly. That started ugly. He spun out earlier today about that spot there. But luckily did not. Yeah. Uh, spin out in that spot. Well, and he's not going to get as lucky this time. This morning he spun out and didn't hit anything hard. But he has marked up the inside wall with the front of his car. Yeah, it started, it started ugly in one and continued to get worse. It was real ugly going on turn four. That's too bad. Tony Abe, a veteran of uh, open wheel racing. And this is what we talked about when you jump on the gas and you just hope it sticks and it didn't stick. Did not stick a lick. The front tire stuck. It's just not good <laughs> sounds right stick. here. Mm. Mm. It doesn't look like he hit that wall very hard, but you know what? Pretty hard. Doesn't take this car on today at 159 laps. Some drivers stopped under this caution, but they were toward the tail end of the lead lap. The leaders stayed out. Let's show you what happened at turn four. Jeff Hammond. Yeah, as we can see, the 97 car coming off of turn four, and he starts working up to the outside. Right about there, the spotter should have been saying, outside, outside, but it looks like the car, he just kept coming over and got right into Joe Nemechek, and right in the wall he goes. So unfortunately for the 97 car, makes me wonder if he was listening very closely to his spotter. We haven't said a lot about spotters today. And they're very critical here at Daytona. And I think they've been doing a pretty good job all day because this is really one of the first incidents we've had because it looked like driver error. Jeff, I talked to a couple of spotters yesterday, and they said the toughest places on this racetrack are right there, the exit of turn four, and down the short chute entering turn one because you're looking at the cars either head on or tail on for the top of the roof, and it's very difficult to tell distance between those cars front to back. That's a good point, Mike, because I got honest with you, this is the best I've ever been able to see the Daytona 500. Oh, oh, oh trouble. Reed Sorensen. Reed Sorensen into the wall. That looked like maybe a right front tire went down right there. Our second caution yeah, of the day. The there. Reed has been a part of both of them. And hard lick, too. Get another angle here. Ouch. Thank goodness for safer barriers. And now we've got a bit of a fire. Come on, Reed. Let's. Uh, it might be time to exit. Get get a little quicker getting out of that thing. Safety trucks having a hard time getting across the track because we saw uh, cars going in front of them. This blue tire. We. Uh, that's the second blown tire I've had this week with the same car. The first time we had some type of shock rub. I think there we just overheated the bead. Um, I was losing brake pedals, so I was lifting about 10 car lengths early, and it just wasn't enough. I don't know if we didn't have enough opening on the front or what the deal was, but just overheated it and melted the bead. And He's got a perfect time to run a good lap oh. here. Whoa. Hold on, Rusty. Trying to lock it down. Now, I noticed as he came out of turn four that it really looked like he slid the car a lot. Now, you know, whether they made an adjustment uh, because the track temperature had cooled off so much, I don't know. But that's unfortunate, and I hate to see that for us this last time. Hopefully, his backup car is good. Yeah. He's carrying a lot of speed into here, and you're trying to really let it roll. It looked like he got in a little bit high right there. And if you try to turn the car down, that's whenever it gets away from you. And there's not much room exiting. As I said earlier, and I know that, that I think Jeff Gordon commented that the track had a, a lot of grip. I think that turns one and two are still don't have quite the grip that they did in the past. It's the safer barrier that comes across the track. Vibration crash. Double zero. AJ Allmendinger, who had led a moment ago during the caution flag, his first and only start in this car, and he has tagged the wall very, very hard. Jeff Gordon had got by those two cars, Tony Raines and Dave Blaney, so he is going to be the free pass here. The only kicker is is Carl Edwards. Carl was coming off of pit road at the exact same time. Yeah, I don't think. I'm not he sure. May down. I believe he stayed on the lead lap there. Well, AJ has knocked that wall down right here now. Hard hit. AJ Both was ends. was uh, career best finish last week. Got a great run a couple weeks ago. Yeah, I think the kill. 
driving the Red Bull Toyota, was uh, replacing that ride, putting the double zero for this week. Oh, yeah, that's going to get it. They were ooh, man. about three wide there. You could see that he kind of got squeezed out of the middle into the wall hard head first and then back in into the wall. Anytime that you see a race car take a right hand turn, it's, it's not good. I mean, even no. if you, you get spun from the left rear or something, it's going to hit hard, but look here. it's right hand turns. You can see he gets into the 01 of Regan Smith and he had the 45 on the inside, so he didn't have really anywhere to go. It kind of upsets eat? these cars. It upsets them arrow wise and, and also uh, as you as you jerk the wheel, you just lose control easily. See that shock absorber rolling down the racetrack out of the back of the car after he hit. As you can see, it's just a it's hard race in there. The, I'm not sure the 01 knew or thought or had any idea that the double zero was going to be in there with him. See a shock absorber rolling across the racetrack. That's a pretty savage impact. On Elliot Sadler in trouble. As we come back to the Kansas Speedway. I got a fire truck right there at you, see, hear me. Well, we talked about those right front tires. We saw one. Could this be the start of something else? Because he's obviously has blown a right front tire. Could be from a puncture. And once again, the safety vehicle is rolling quickly by no longer racing back to the caution flag. And like the rule or not, that's the benefit of the rule right there. Exactly. That's what's the most important thing is that these guys can get to that car that quick. That's a hard hit. Well, Elliot jumps out. Well, doesn't jump out. He is out. That's two weeks in a row for yeah. Elliott. Take a look. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. That is definitely a blown right front. See the tire coming apart. That's the right window out of the right door. And you see, well, there's the fuel pump fire. Eh, eh. On the Ford, the fuel pump is on the left that's side. Right. Yep, that's the oil pump fire. That's oil that has ruptured a line that's coming back on the exhaust system that is causing that fire. Either way, it's really hard to breathe inside that car yeah. right now. Uh, we just blew a right front tire. I'm not sure why. Just no warning at all. Went into turn one and went head on into the wall. But I'm okay again. I got to thank uh, Randy LaJoy and his seats. Uh, that's two weeks in a row. No problems at all. NASCAR, all their safety devices. Uh, I had a hard time getting out of the car on fire. So uh, that hatch can't come soon enough. So I'll be looking forward to that. But uh, tell everybody at home I'm okay. And better luck next week.